Hey there guys, quick video, just kind of as an update to a video I did a couple days ago about the AS34 sucking. Uh, there's been a data mine, and keep in mind that data mines are changes that have already been pushed through, not changes that are coming. So these are live right now. And it revolves around changes to the AS34. And so let's just go down some of these changes in order real quick. So first, the fuse delay distance. That changes the distance at which the uh, fuse will trigger, so how far the missile will go after it initially hits something. So that's been changed to 5 meters. The fuse sensitivity has also been reduced so it'll trigger on weaker armor. This effectively just makes it so that it will overpen less on smaller boats um, and actually still explode. Now there's also the break locks max time, that doesn't really matter. That just means it can go 101 seconds without locking onto something at this point. Um, so it doesn't particularly matter, but inertial navigation drift speed, this is something different. This basically means that its INS is perfect. Um, if you see my video on Hellfire, note the INS drift on the Hellfire is actually rather large, in which case it will not hit the place it was initially intending. It will hit in a very large area around it. That's what inertial navigation drift speed is. It determines how far off course the missile will travel under INS, which is, by the way, its only guidance. It does not get data link. It's its only guidance until it hits the target or it gets a radar lock. And... The radar seeker was changed as well, so it can no longer target aircraft. The new target radius minimum parameter is 15, so that basically means it can no longer target things below a certain size. I'm pretty sure that's what that is supposed to be doing. Side load sensitivity just uh, changes if it can lock things it's not directly looking at, because um, the whole radar side load thing. Range has been reduced, so it'll lock things closer in instead of further out. Unfortunate, oh well. Uh, distance gate is... Um, I'm not entirely sure what distance gate is. I, it sounds similar to speed gate, so that makes me think it has something to do with how fast the target is moving, but I don't think that's the case. But the main thing, the main change that is in effect here is the guidance autopilot. So first thing is loft elevation. Uh, I have some clips here coming up that will kind of demonstrate what this does. Um, then there's the target elevation. I'm pretty sure this is trying to make it hit lower on a target, although this works dubiously as we'll see in a second. Um, loft angle to acceleration multiplier, I'm not entirely sure what that does, but the main thing is that, short of it, without going through all the numbers, is that it lofts. And this kind of helps, and I'm just about to demonstrate why. So here you can see we got four AS-34s going in on a ship here, and you're about to see the uh, lofting in action, but you can also see why it sometimes doesn't work for ships like these. Um, you can see that it decides to actually do its descent onto the target a little bit too late, <laughs> and so only a couple missiles actually hit. But this doesn't actually happen too often, so it's just something to keep in mind. And now, here we got another launch on a front aspect target. Uh, keep in mind that my elevation here was a bit too high to really effectively launch these things. You generally want to launch them from under 1,000 feet, I found, uh, but this still demonstrates the point pretty well. So you can see they're flying in on this ship here, and they start diving. But since I gave them too much altitude initially, they actually managed to level out a little bit before they hit the target, and so they hit a bit high. But they still hit at a pretty good angle and do a decent amount of damage. In fact, the ship actually does burn down here in a second. go. So, on to why it still doesn't really work. So, the whole thing that Gaijin has done here is they've made it so that the missiles will dive on the target, kind of reducing the effects of the fact that they lock onto the center of the bounding box, and they also target a bit lower on the bounding box, I believe. So, you can see they're going in here, and this is on a completely side-on ship, and this is a great demonstration as to why they still don't necessarily work great. They have uh, a bit of flight time, so I'm probably going to speed this up a bit here. Alright, so the missiles are approaching the target. They're climbing up here, and then they dive down. This would be great if it was front on, and you can see they just fly right to the center. So they're still hitting way too high in the bounty box. It's kind of a fix that Gaijin has done, but not really. Hope this video helps you guys, and I'll see you in the next one.